This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Big weekend in college football as far as undefeated teams being tested for this week. And it's not just that big matchup between Oregon and Washington. We've also got UNC trying to remain undefeated. We've got USC on the road taking on Notre Dame. So some very big spots here for teams that are undefeated thus far. We're going to break down those big games, outline where Ed's model is showing value for this week and get you ready for week seven in college football. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research, joined here as I am every Wednesday by Dr. Ed Feng. You can find his work at thepowerrank.com and check him out on Twitter at the Power Rank. Ed, week seven is coming up and a huge, huge week for uh, the Pac-12. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm really looking forward to Oregon, Washington. Should be a fantastic game. Looking forward to breaking it down. And uh, yeah, should be another awesome week in college football. I also love that this Oregon, Washington game is a 2.30 uh, central time game. Like it's mm-hmm. kind of weird to have a game that high profile that is thrust in the afternoon slot. Like usually, you know, it gets like the primetime treatment. And like personally, that fits better with my schedule. So I kind of like the fact that we get these huge, huge games beginning right away in the afternoon. My friend who is a Washington fan grew up in Seattle and I are actually both running a half marathon the next morning, like at 7 a.m. Eastern oh, time. So we're actually pretty thrilled that this is an afternoon game. Nice. Uh, where is your half marathon at? Uh, Detroit International Half. Nice. So very cool. Well, good luck to you. There. Why, thank you very much. Yeah. I mean, I, I know a half is nothing for you, so that's not a, you know, but I mean, still half is, half is never nothing. That's true. That's true. Well, good luck still to you. Uh, have fun with that. And uh, hopefully Thanks. you can get a fun game in before you rest up for the next day. As mentioned, we're going to talk about that game. Also talk about just generally which of these undefeated teams we most buy into as far as being legitimate title contenders uh, across this year and much more to get you ready in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. You can also find us on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV Plus. To get FanDuel TV Plus, go to FanDuel.com slash watch and log in via your FanDuel Sportsbook or FanDuel Fantasy account. You can also Get FanDuel TV Plus on Amazon Fire, Apple TV, or Roku devices. Snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. You've been thinking about joining FanDuel. There's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, totals, and more. So visit FanDuel.com and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text Next Step to 53342 in Arizona. 1-888-789-7777. Or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana. 1-800-522-4700. Visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland. 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia. Or call 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org. Or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts. Or call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text open Y in New York. Now let's start things off here more broadly and talk about those surprise undefeated teams. We got Oklahoma, UNC, Louisville, the Pac-12 schools, and they're all undefeated, but we know that records can be deceptive this early on in the year when strength of schedule can be so disproportionate. So are you particularly skeptical of any of the of those undefeated teams having staying power going forward? 
A few of them. I think Oklahoma is legit. I think this goes all the way back to last season when Dylan Gabriel was hurt and Texas really uh, put a big number on them. They also went 0-5 in one-score games. I think the real story is that Oklahoma wasn't as bad as their results suggested last season. I think we're seeing that. Uh, This is a team that beat a Texas team that I thought might be one of the best in the country, a national title contender. I mean, it was certainly close, but they were they were definitely in there. Um, The offense has been awesome. The defense has been good enough. And, you know, I mean, Dylan Gabriel had a really, really good game there. So I definitely think they're legit. Uh, In terms of North Carolina, we'll talk about them a little bit more later. But like, uh, I mean, who have they played? South Carolina is their their best opponent so far and that was kind of a a crazy game in which their defense played pretty well the defense has been a lot better than last year but still not good uh we'll get into that in a little bit and then you know louisville i don't know i'm not i'm not necessarily buying what they're doing under jeff brown really nice win um over notre dame but uh you know 26 in offense when i look at my uh adjusted success rate 59th on defense nothing's really standing out uh it'll probably get a lot harder pretty soon for them and you can kind of see that in the market too, because Louisville is facing Pittsburgh this week. It's seven and a half point favorites against a Pittsburgh team that's really struggling so far this year. The total is low at 44 and a half. So seven and a half is not like a small number by any means, but it does seem like the market pretty skeptical of them. So it sounds like you're kind of in line with what the market is saying about Louisville specifically, where the record is very good and they get deserve kudos for that. But it doesn't mean we expect them to be some dominant team in the future. For sure. Absolutely. Okay, well, let's talk about some of these fun games coming up throughout this week in college football, beginning with that really fun game uh, in the afternoon. That is Oregon taking on Washington. Washington is a two and a half point favorite at FanDuel Sportsbook. Total in this game is 67 and a half. And Ed, you've been in Washington, I think, honestly, since last year with Michael Penix Jr. being in town, and they get a huge test here against Oregon. So who you got coming out on top for Oregon against Washington? Well, spoiler alert, uh, my number is exactly 2.5, so (laughs) not necessarily seeing any value through um, the numbers. I think this game is pretty interesting because both these teams came in with high expectations for offense, which have basically been met. I mean, Washington has been incredible. uh, First in the nation and adjusted success rate. Uh, Oregon hasn't been too far behind at fourth. Washington really has a lot of weapons. I mean, their top three receivers came back. Uh, Jalen McMillan actually hasn't played the last two games, and he's listed as questionable for this game. I got to think he plays in such a high-profile game. Um, so, yeah, so they're they're great on the offensive side of the ball. But there were question marks for both teams on the defensive side of the ball. And, you know, Oregon's actually really answered those questions. Uh, they're actually 14th in my adjusted success rate at this point. And Washington hasn't so much. They're 65th in the same metrics. And what, what, what I see when you look at these rosters is, you know, Washington kind of leaned on a bunch of guys that played last year, uh, had a lot of returning starters, hoping those guys would get better. They've been kind of roughly the same. Oregon uh, really went to the transfer portal, brought in a ton of guys, and yeah, apparently Dan Lanning knows what he's doing on the defensive side of the ball. He really got a lot of players that seem to be making an impact. Look, six games can be a small sample size. You know, maybe Oregon's defense is not, you know, top 15 unit like my numbers say now. I mean, I don't know. We'll kind of, we'll see about that. Um, but right now, I kind of think that, you know, like if you just looked at numbers this year, you would actually favor Oregon in this game, and that's not the best way to make lines. But it really is the strength of that defense. I think if you had to lean any one way, I would lean Oregon uh, and probably the under because I, I think the early returns on the Oregon defense are there, and, and you can kind of see the reasons why, right? A batch of new uh, players – Um, You know, you actually have a corner that was expected to start that was bumped by transfer from Colorado. Uh, It really looks like Dan Lanning's kind of figured out that side of the ball. So, yeah, interesting game. I would lean Oregon, lean under, but not seeing a ton of value. I I wouldn't I wouldn't go bet these because of value. I would go bet these because you want to have a little action on a on a pretty big game. Uh, the total, as you mentioned, six, seven and a half right now under is minus 110. If you do want to go that way, the plus two and a half on Oregon is minus 102. But 
also could take the approach of this is going to be a fun game. I don't want to sweat it. So just sit back and watch. That could be the other approach to this game as well. Let's talk now about Miami taking on UNC, where right now UNC is a three and a half point favorite. Total for this game is 57 and a half. And you've talked a lot, Ed, about how the value of having a potential high end draft pick at quarterback gives a big leg up to a team as far as their upside goes. And UNC definitely has that with Drake May. So tight spread here. How do you see this game playing out? Yeah. I mean, first we got to talk about Miami and, and not kneeling on the ball last week. I mean, it was <laughs> like I went to bed. Uh, so I actually found this out the next morning, but in case you were under a rock this weekend, uh, Miami had the ball three point lead and uh, should have taken a knee. They didn't. They ran a play. The guy fumbled. Georgia Tech gets the ball back pretty deep in their own territory. Miami should still win the game. Uh, Georgia Tech completes a pass. Uh, probably pretty defended pretty well. Went right over the guy's fingertips. Miami should still probably win the game. Last play of the game. And somehow Miami lets the Georgia Tech receiver get behind both of them. Uh, for a game-winning touchdown, which was almost not a winning game-winning touchdown because the guy slid and almost slid at the one-inch line. Yeah. Well, which was not out of the question. So uh, just kind of a remarkable, remarkable outcome, remarkable set of uh, circumstances, which I think you – I don't know. I mean, my number is pretty close to this. I have UNC by about five and uh, – I, I don't know. I was kind of thinking maybe there'd be some more market correction because of that, but there, there really isn't. Um, you know, I mean, Miami has has done pretty well. Obviously, lost for the first time last week. I think UNC is, um, you know, they're they're pretty decent on offense. You know, Drake May is great. It's going to be a top draft pick, but didn't really have a lot of weapons coming back from last year. So when you look and they're 18th in passing success rate adjusted for opponent in my numbers, I think that's pretty good. Uh, overall, the defense is 46th, which is a vast, vast improvement from last season. So I think it should be an interesting game. You know, North Carolina should remain undefeated, but it's a pretty tight spread. So don't be surprised if they don't. Looking at this number, it's a three and a half right now, but the three and a half is minus 115. So it sounds like that's, you know, once you account for the juice of minus 115, pretty in line with your numbers. Are you going to pass on that one despite showing value because it's pretty close to the mark pretty close to where you're at yeah i'm, I'm definitely going to pass on it i mean i think miami was a team that hasn't looked the best in in my numbers and it, you know a team that kind of looked at like they had rebounded from a tough season last year but i'm not necessarily buying it yet so yeah i'm, I'm definitely a pass all right, let's finish up here by talking about USC at Notre Dame, where Notre Dame is a two and a half point favorite. Total is 60 and a half. And we talked preseason at about how skeptical you were of USC's defense, and they have come through on that. They have definitely been as bad as you thought they may be, but now they're on the road. They're facing a very competent offense and trying to remain undefeated. So can the defense for USC do enough here to keep this team undefeated and pull off the upset in this one? Yeah, I mean, I think the idea of like USC needing to pull off an upset here is kind of interesting in and of itself. I'm, I'm, I should have checked what I would have made this in the preseason, but I wouldn't be surprised if I would have had USC favored in in this game. And it's and it's actually probably one of these quote unquote out of conference games that should really be an in conference game, a little bit less a home field, simply because these two programs know each other, and USC always makes this trip um, every other year. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, I have Notre Dame by about 2.3 points, so I'm pretty in line with the market here. Uh, I'm certainly seeing what you were saying about USC's defense. It was, um, you know, it, it, it's 42nd when I look at adjusted success rate, but it's a lot worse than adjusted yards per play. So they're they're, they're doing better stopping people, but the explosive plays are, are definitely hurting them. Uh, you know, giving up 506 yards to Arizona and 41 points. Uh, definitely not, you know, what, definitely not, uh, you know, what they were going for at the beginning of the season. Um, you know, they kind of had, you know, a mix of returning starters and, and bringing in transfers. It doesn't look like it's working. You know, you look at Oregon, Washington, uh, USC, you know, I mean, the defensive guy, Dan Lanning is the one that's kind of pushed his unit ahead. And, you know, that might be the difference, uh, in, in, in that conference. 
So can they get it done? Um, I'm not sure. Oh, did that total go down? Yeah, it went wow. down two points. Uh, I think there's a lot of wind this weekend. I'm not sure if that's impacting this game, but I know for NFL on Sunday, there is wind everywhere. And totals on Monday in the NFL just crashed as a result of that. Yeah. Yeah, it's that time of year. I mean, usually, well, actually, I guess it's not that time of year. Usually, uh, yeah, it shouldn't be. That, <laughs> usually, you think about really having an impact in November. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got a we got a ways to go until November. So, um, you know, I'm not seeing any value in this game. Uh, when the market was at 62 and a half, uh, I did notice that the unabated line, which is an aggregator of sharp sports books, they were leaning on the under probably for the wet weather, weather reasons that you mentioned. Um, so I guess I'm not surprised at all. I've really actually found that unabated line to be a pretty strong predictor of market movement um, and, and some winners. So not surprised that that went down. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think it should be a great game. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, it's definitely the wind. Um, looking in South Bend on Saturday night, uh, 14 mile per hour winds in the forecast. Um, so that's there. There is some rain. I don't care personally as much about rain. It's more about wind. But when you have both together, that's a bit of a gross spot. So I honestly wouldn't be shocked if this total comes down more just based on that weather alone. I want to go back to USC, though, because you mentioned that their success rate has been better than expected. Um But then the yards for play is very high. Now, we typically say explosives are hard to predict. Big plays are hard to predict. But the prior assumption for USC's defense that they were not good. Does that play into that analysis where you say, okay, skeptical of USC's defense, or maybe we do expect explosives to remain in play there just because we don't think this defense is maybe as good as the success rate early on says? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, you know, I think this, uh, it, well, okay. So first of all, just let me point out like the numbers that I mentioned, 42nd in success rate, 91st in yards per play. That is only data from this year. So when you, when you put the handicap on and and you say, okay, well, you know, you know, FBS average was a pretty decent result, I think for this defense, because they were a lot worse last year. Top 25 would have been kind of a miracle. So you know, they're kind of somewhere near where we expected them to be. I guess when you average things together, I think um, I think there's a lot of signal in yards per play, even though it does, it, it does, uh, you know, there is a big influence from those explosive plays. But uh, but I certainly, we, we in no sense, maybe we uh, lean on success rate, but we certainly don't throw out yards per play at all. So I do think there is some signal in there. So maybe right now I would say they're slightly worse than I expected preseason, but that's it, it's not too far from uh, the outcomes that I expect. Uh, it is certainly in a range where I think it's going to hold this team back, and uh, we may see that on Saturday. Okay, well, let's uh, finish up here by opening up the entire board to you. When you look at the lines right now for week number seven, what are your favorite bets uh, across college football for this week? I am pretty pumped that we have one more week of uh, fading Kentucky. So they are they are hosting Missouri. And uh, Kentucky went to Georgia last week and got their, their clocks cleaned. Um, Georgia played like the team that we expected them to this preseason. And that was kind of nice because I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure I talked about Georgia minus 14 and a half yep. on the show last week. That was uh, that was pretty comfortable from the beginning. I think what the market is saying is that, okay, well, fine. We'll give you a pass. It's Georgia. Uh, I don't think Kentucky is a very good football team. Uh, I think Devin Leary is terrible and he was last year and he continues to be this year. Uh, They are 92nd in my justice success rate. They really pulled off that win against Florida because a lot of explosive runs by Ray Davis, the running back on the flip side, Missouri has actually been a pretty good football team. Um, They're, they're looking pretty good on both sides of the ball. My adjusted success rate, 20th on offense, 23rd on defense. They came into a lot of questions at the quarterback position, uh, but Brady Cook has been pretty good. Uh, they did not win last week when LSU came to visit, and Cook looked kind of bad through a pick six at the end of the game. That really widened that spread, but in general, he's been really good this year. So uh, what I'm seeing is Missouri is a pretty decent football team. Uh, I don't think Kentucky is all that good. And um, I mean, my numbers favor Missouri outright. I think there's a lot of value in plus two and a half on the road at Kentucky. So right now, the two and a half on Mizzou is minus 108. Their money line is plus 116. 
It's not a massive gap. Uh, would you rather take the points there or the money line on Mizzou? Oh, I don't know. Both. Sure. Okay. <laughs> I really don't like Kentucky. I do not think they're a good football team. So, um, yeah, this is definitely definitely the last week you'll see a little number. Well, actually, maybe not definitely. Yeah, Mizzou is pretty good, too. I think they've gotten respect from the market as well. So I think that, you know, maybe they give them a second pass, especially if it's, you know, a game where they're competitive uh, throughout that game. But, you know, like you said, you did you did recommend Georgia last week, minus 14 and a half. And I followed you on that one and never really Sweet. had any concerns. I stopped checking in the second quarter. So <laughs> felt pretty good about that one from the start. So, you know, if we can go back to back on that. I feel pretty good. So Mizzou plus two and a half is minus 108. Ed also does like their money line plus 116 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. That is all that we have here for today. On the college football side of things, we are back with you once again tomorrow, breaking down NFL week number six with Ed once again as well. Don't forget primetime Tom with Tom Vecchio. He'll be recording the Thursday night football preview for the Chiefs and the Broncos either tonight or tomorrow. It depends on Travis Kelsey's status, but that'll be up in your podcast feed later on. You can find the other covering the spread shows on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV+. Plus. Ed, people want to find your numbers or check out all of your work. Where can they do all that? I am at thepowerrank.com. Check out my free sports betting email newsletter. I send out five nuggets Saturday every week. Uh, not just my stuff, but uh, other people out there that I that I think are plus EV in terms of betting. So it uh, gives you a sense for who else that maybe you should follow. Check that out at thepowerrank.com. All right. You can find Ed on Twitter at The Power Rank and find his other podcasts, the Football Analytics Show, wherever you get your podcasts. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J I M S A N N E S. You can also follow FanDuel Research at FanDuel Research. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down NFL week number six. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 